Hi folks, welcome to part eight of our fixture recap series, super glue. Super glue is one of our favorite work holding techniques. It's not as conventional, but it's absolutely worth seeing where it can really shine in machining applications. We've got a whole page dedicated on resources, tips and tricks, and best practices. Not all super glues are the same. Not all tapes are the same. This is not a conventional work holding technique. It doesn't have that mechanical fastener like a vise or a screw or a clamp does, but it's so good for so many parts that it's absolutely worth adding it to your wheelhouse. Before we dive in, we created a PDF that summarizes all of the 10 fixturing techniques we covered through this recap series. Download it, use it as a reference, use it as a guide. We talk about the pros and the cons of each of those techniques. Hopefully it serves as a resource when you're trying to figure out the best way to hold that part. Okay, let's dive in. First up is our overview video in Widget 185, where we walk through the basics of what is super glue work holding technique. Yes, you're just using super glue. The big difference though is you're not applying the super glue directly onto either the fixture or the part, but rather using a layer of tape in between the two. This does two things, one of which is obvious, the other is not. The obvious thing is it keeps the super glue off of your part and your fixture. That means you don't have to scrape it off or dissolve it off, you just pull the tape off. The second thing, and this is not intuitive and it's absolutely amazing, is that the use of tape increases the functionality and use of the super glue. Painter's tape actually works great, it's relatively inexpensive, but for applications where you've got flood coolant or you're gonna be machining more aggressively or materials that may heat up more, you wanna consider stepping up to a high temp tape like a powder coat tape. None of this stuff is particularly expensive. I will admit, yes, there's a little bit more of a setup time, a perceived, say, hassle factor, but it's absolutely worth it, especially for parts that you wouldn't otherwise have a good way of holding. Toward the end of this video, we start to show just how capable this is. And again, think of it kind of like vacuum work holding, where once you've got, say, a six by six inch surface area of super glue holding onto it, you can really wail on these parts. And we show that off with a shear hog in this video. Next up, Widget 214, we're machining a mini bike sprocket. Great example of a part that works really well with super glue. We dropped a scrap piece of aluminum into a vise, decked it off. This makes sure that our part is flat and a good clean surface. We then apply painter's tape. We're using an accelerator in this particular example, then put our actual raw material down. When you're done with a super glue part, there are three good ways to separate the parts, and those are force, heat or acetone. Force meaning hitting it sideways with a hammer to pop the part off. Heat like a heat gun or a hair dryer to help break down that glue bond or acetone which does a similar thing of breaking down those bonds. You can also include in your fixture a small relieved flat area. Then you can use a non-marring tool to reach underneath there and pop the part off. In widget 238, we machined a pair of cufflinks. Now these cufflinks would have been too small to hold alone with super glue. There just wasn't enough surface area to keep them secured while we were machining them. So we used the same trick that we talked about in the vacuum work holding recap video, which is using super glue on a larger piece of material, but leaving the parts tabbed in place until the very end. The key part of this workflow being not only the work holding, but the cam strategy behind how you rough out, semi-finish, finish, tab, and then finally part off those parts. We had a combination success failure back in widget 65. The goal was to machine this object that you could really in no other way hold. There were no square faces. It's kind of this just curved blob. So we machined op one, and then we machined a mirrored pocket or fixture for op two. Now it actually should have worked. It was operator error that caused it to not work. But the idea was that you could then use super glue to drop that part into that perfect cavity and then successfully machine op two. The error that we made was simply a goof on our coordinate system and alignment, but from a work holding standpoint, works great. Widget 186, we had to machine a pulley. Now, if you had the thicker material, you could have just held this in a vise, but the part was nearly the full thickness of our part, so super glue gives us access to that full part profile. And this is a great video that just shows how easy super glue really is to make those one-off style parts. It's a relatively small part. The super glue work holding was great as demonstrated at the end when we were trying to knock it off with the dead blow hammer. Dead blows usually do a good job of not marring your part, but grab a piece of wood or a piece of nylon as a buffer to further help. We needed to push a dowel pin into this part for the next off work holding, so you can use a traditional six inch vise as a press in a pinch. 
Widget 193, we machined a casting pattern that was later sent off to cast a number of micro surface plates. And great example of where super glue works even when your sub fixture is, in this case, wood. After applying the painter's tape, we used a dowel pin to help burnish and really push that tape down to make sure we had good adhesion. Super glued our block, laid it down. And the real advantage here to super glue over, say, vacuum is that if and when we cut all the way through our part, you don't risk losing your work holding like you could in a vacuum situation. Precision board or wren shape is super free machining, so no concerns whatsoever about the work holding nature of the super glue here. The concern was how do we separate this at the end without breaking the part? You could use a sharp putty knife or a paint scraper type tool to gently work up that edge and then slightly pry up underneath it. Great thing is the paint then just pulls right off. There's no super glue residue left over. Widget 198, we were making a dust shoe for the Tormach and that required this machined collar to clamp around the spindle. Great example of a part where super glue meant we didn't need to worry about having a vise or work holding that matched this saw cut scrap piece of aluminum. We put down our painter's tape, super glued it down, pretty aggressive cuts, pretty high amount of material removal rate. It gave us full access to the ID and OD of the part. And it's worth noting as well, while there weren't any particularly critical tolerances here, Another benefit of super glue is the fact that you're not clamping the part, say front to back or even side to side, which means you're not putting potential stress or bow in the part as you're machining it. Once we were done, putty knife popped it off, and then a quick cross drilled hole and slitting saw gave us our split clamp design and we were off to the races. Super glue is not perfect. And in this case, we had a failure. There just wasn't enough surface area relative to the cutting forces to hold this part in place. Consider using super glue along with another type of either mechanical fastener or fixturing. In this case, we remachined this custom fixture with a support post, and we were concerned that this fixture might overheat. Aluminum can get pretty hot when you're machining it, and if it gets too hot, the bond on the painter's tape or the super glue itself will lose its adhesion. So we drilled some holes in this part and had a gentle airline blowing through it as a means of cooling it, and it worked great. This was a cubic trisection puzzle. Great project if you're new to machining or if you're looking for a project for students or makerspace. Relatively complicated part, couple different ways to make it, but really rewarding in the end. Widget 239, we had to make a number of these bearing cup rings for Johnny Five. Drop down a piece of aluminum, deck it off, powder coat tape, super glue our part on there, and we were able to machine all four of those rings in one setup. And finally, in widget 260, using strips of the powder coat tape. You don't always need full tape coverage, especially on a part like this where you've got a lot of surface area and relatively low cutting forces. Here, five strips of the powder coat tape was plenty sufficient to hold this part down and actually makes it a little bit easier to remove when you're done. Chris, over at the wonderful YouTube channel, ClickSpring, has long been a user of the super glue technique and he has his own tips and tricks on using it, especially for smaller lathe parts. We'll have a link below to Chris's full video on this and we asked if he'd offer a quick preview in this video. G'day folks, Chris from ClickSpring here. Super glue is one of my go-to methods for turning hard to hold parts on the lathe. And you'll often see me leave a center tip on the workpiece so that I can use it to register the part again on the mandrel for future cuts. Card here to the NYC CNC page will have all these videos listed out as well as all of the other fixturing recap series videos. Hope these are helpful for you folks. Hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.